Okay. Let's look at the stages of sample preparation and which kind of sample preparation methods are very commonly used. So actually the process starts by collecting the samples. And this is something that uh, you will have a look at in, on a separate, in a le separate lecture. Um, and sample collection, of course, is very, very important as well. Mm, but mostly analytical chemists uh, obtain the sample already from the people who have collected it. It can be collected from the industry, it can be collected from nature if it's environmental samples, it can be uh, collected from production lines, uh, it can be collected from um, shops if these are food samples, all different kinds of, of collected samples. Um, when the samples arrive to the library, then they need to the to the lab, then they need to be consumed. That means that usually the sample analysis does not start immediately, but it might take a bit of time because maybe there are already samples prepared, being in preparation, something like that. And uh, maybe a larger batch of samples is collected together if possible, uh, and then all processed at once. So conserving samples can be something very important also in the lab procedure. And this could incorporate, for example, freezing the sample or adjusting the pH so that it would, um, the compounds that what need to be analyzed would be stable at the given pH. Or, for example, adding some kind of additives, um, adding a solvent, for example, to avoid microbiological growth water samples could be also something uh, important. Uh, and But once when the samples are ready for processing, maybe there are sufficient amount of them, or sometimes also actually immediately when the samples arrive to the lab, the sample preparation starts. And after sample preparation, the samples should be ready for run, running. So that means that they should be in the suitable solvent, uh, reproducible and everything else, which means that we can now actually go to the analytical instrument and start our measurement. Uh, but th what does the sample preparation then contain? Uh, one of the first aspects is homogenization or homogenization. Uh, this is especially important for solid or semi-solid samples. For example, um, different um, soils, so you know there are different soil parts, some could be more uh, organic rich, some could be more inorganic, but we would need to get a representative part of this um, solid that over this whole sample that has been brought to the lab. So we would need to homogenize this first and they, then take a, sm a smaller piece of this sample. The same is true, for example, for uh, plant parts or for foods. Um, also for biological samples, if they are some kind of tissues, for example, homogenization is very important. Thereafter, we can follow with the extraction. If there are specific types of samples, then we might need to do something between as well. Uh, for example, for um, full blood samples, we would need to, we would, could, for example, want to break the cells in, in the sample or the same for the tissue. Sometimes it's done together with the homogenization, but we could think of this as an additional step. Thereafter, uh, we extract the sample, which is usually what we think when we say, oh, sample preparation, but actually it also incorporates homogenization and other upcoming processes. The extracts might need concentrating or solvent uh, or, three, or, or changing the solvent of the sample. So this is something that can be followed after the extraction. And if needed, then the extract can be further purified. This could incorporate filtration if we want to purify from the particles, but it could also mean purification relative to the um, matrix components, so something that could potentially interfere with our analysis. So this could be done either as part of the extraction or a process followed uh, that is following the extraction. Um, so let's look once more into this 2001 survey about different uh, methods that that, be, uh, that analytical chemists use, if for at least for chromatographic and mass spec analysis. And 
in spite of the fact that it's slightly old, it's probably very much true still what are the, these um, methods used. Unfortunately, in the last 2019 survey, these questions were not asked, so uh, we don't have the information exactly uh, from, from uh, recent years. But uh, almost all sample preparation procedures did use weighing and pH adjustment and filtration dilution, which is also very logical. So these steps are very likely to occur depending on what kind of samples you have. Also, for chromatographic methods, very logical to have internal standard additions. Um, Colon chromatography might be something that might have lo lost the ground over the 20 years, uh, but evaporation, sanitation, sanitation mostly to um, improve the solubility of the samples or to break the cells in case of um, biological or plant material, still very relevant. Centrifugation to get rid of large solid materials in the sample processing, again, very relevant. Uh, concentrating the sample, still very, very relevant. SPE, so solid phase extraction, that we will look in detail, as well as liquid-liquid extraction, we will also look in detail. Very important methods in very many prepar sample preparation methods, especially in liquid chromatography, gas chromatography, and mass spectrometric analysis. But why not also in, in, in other techniques? Uh, drying, adding reagents, heating, derivatization, all these kinds of, of processes as well. And another important uh, fact, what factor of the sample preparation is how many different aspects or how many different steps need to be incorporated in the sample preparations. And um, so on the on this column we see how many of the different techniques analysts used and how many responders had this number of, of uh, steps in their kind of average sample preparation te technique. And they see that most of them will combine two or three of these steps. And it's true that usually we can't um, get by just by using one step. We can't just do the uh, SPV. We probably first need to dilute the, dilute the samples or concentrate them afterwards or, or weigh the sample or something like that. So. Usually the sample preparation consists of many different things that need to be done to actually get the sample prepared. 